Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Brenda Herrera. I'm the facilitator for this meeting. Um, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all students, sponsored by College to Career Affairs and StriveScan. Um, thank you for joining us. And a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, you can use a Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week on the same website. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenters now. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Kelly Gualtieri. I'm the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management here at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, we are going to each present a little bit about our institutions and our programs on the agriculture and marine bio side. Um, and I'm up first. So to quickly share my screen, um, just a little bit about Maine Maritime Academy. We are a public school um, small public school with under a thousand students in our in our total student body. We're located in Castine, Maine. It's about an hour south of Acadia National Park. Um, so we are completely on the other side of, of the United States from you. Um, however, we represent 26 states and five countries. Um, normally our students do come from um, the coastal areas. So whether it's the East Coast, West Coast, and then we have a big following down in Texas as well. Um, that's where you'll find all the big maritime ports um, and even some of the military type bases. Um, and we tend to draw students that are, are interested in a structured kind of lifestyle. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. We do have division three athletics um, and 18 varsity teams. Um, we have over 30 student clubs and organizations, which includes everything from scuba um, to our schooner uh, crew, which is tall ships. Um, and then we have some other interesting clubs like Woodsman um, that does lumberjack competitions, academic ones like SNAMI um, for the engineers. We have over 60 training, research, and pleasure vessels. So there's a small view of our waterfront um, from the opposite side, um, but most of our vessels are all there right now, still in the water. We have some beautiful weather and all the students are out on, on the waterfront um, as we speak, actually. Um, the best part about it is your four years here will end with 90% of our graduates being employed in the industry within 90 days of graduation. Um, and that's something that we really, um, we really focus on is getting our students ready to take jobs in the maritime and, and marine related fields. So just a little bit about our academic um, side of the house in terms of just our ocean studies. Um, they like to consider themselves one department with six majors in it. Um, so we do have three other areas, um, but right now we're focusing on this kind of um, this field or this department. We have marine biology, which focuses on the organisms in the sea. Um, we have oceanography, which focuses um, on the actual water in terms of um, more the marine science side. And then we have the interface of those two in terms of the coastal and marine environmental science. And that also looks at the human impact on the um, coast, on its, its um, on the future of, of the ocean and, and what we need to do to protect it. Um, one of the unique things about our program and because we are a maritime based school is we do have a dual major option which a lot of the students in the ocean studies um, program takes advantage of. Um, and that is getting a 200 ton um, near coastal small vessel operations license. So it allows our students to not only do the research but also to be the backup drivers on the vessels. So it comes in really handy with, with um, programs like NOAA, the National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration, and some of the other um, research, water research-based um, companies and, and institutions. Um, so those students can go tag sea turtles, they can go dive off the coastal reefs, um, but they can also work on the vessel side as well. So sometimes when research dollars are tight, those students get the nod because they fill two roles. We also have a unique um, 
scientific diving certification program within our scuba. A lot of our students take scuba here, everyone from our engineers who are taking underwater welding um, to our students in our, our, um, in our ocean studies department who like to go to their scientific diving class in Belize um, or Bonaire. They always travel somewhere different, um, but it's a pretty cool program. One of the things that we like to talk about is most of our students aren't sure which direction is actually the right one for them. Um, so we do have a common first year within that program. We do not have a lot of gen eds. Everything here across all of our programs are really focused on your major, um, but it allows you the opportunity to find out what's the difference between marine bio, oceanography, and coastal and marine environmental science. Um, so you really do have a year to get to know your professors in the small environment in terms of class sizes, things like that, before you actually make your decision. Um, for majors. What, what is really important to us is to, we offer the skills, knowledge um, needed to succeed in a global economy. And so that's actually in our mission statement. Our students are learning hands-on. Um, they are actually out doing the research and learning about it. They're a community of ocean scientists. Um, we do have, again, those 60 pleasure training um, research vessels at our disposal. They can do everything from a seafloor drag right here on our campus to helping out other institutions like the University of Maine put in bell buoys and things like that and do water samples. So there's a lot of collaboration across the different um, schools here in Maine. We are very hands-on. Probably the biggest reason students come to us they do not spend a lot of time in the classroom, which is one of the big reasons they're all here on campus. So our whole student body has returned. Yes, we are practicing social distance and we're wearing masks, but we can't do our education online. And that's the biggest thing um, in terms of that hands-on aspect. And it's all student-centered. So because we're small, we can focus on what students want, the direction they want their research to go. Um, and that's really something that we, we pride ourselves on. Located on the coast of Maine, we have an ocean laboratory at our disposal. Um, it's really, our campus is on the coast. We're right by Acadia National Park. Again, I mean, you can't pick a better location for what you want to do. Every program here has a summer experience or field or co-op co internship that you must do. Everything from working um, in, our, uh, in an aquarium um, type setting to diving to um, exploring different phytoplankton, things of that nature. What does it culminate in? It culminates into a de degree that can go many, many different places, from veterinary school um, to fisheries to um, hydro hydrographic um, specialists, um, you name it, teachers, oceanographers. Um, with that, I think I am actually out of time. Um, but if you want more information, mainmaritime.edu. Um, and I will turn it over to the next presenter. Yeah. And I think that's me. So I will go ahead and get this started here. My name is Shannon Barnes. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Florida Southern. Um, we're a small school, about 3,000 total students right in the middle of the state of Florida. So we're about halfway between Orlando and Tampa in a town of about 100,000 called Lakeland. So we're a really nice location. Um, Florida Southern has 70 different programs of study, so tons of different options. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth on all of the different things here because I wanted to take a moment to really pull out some of the ones that are most specifically related to kind of agriculture, marine biology, working with animals. Um, and this is a huge portion of our population at FSC. We have a very strong marine biology program. We draw students from all over the country who are really interested in pursuing marine biology because we're really well located for that. I'm sitting less than 100 feet away from Lake Hollingsworth. We are on the waterfront right there. So if you're interested in freshwater ecosystems, we get our students in there like really the first week of classes. Um, but you've also got the Atlantic and the Gulf side within an easy drive. Um, Florida Southern is also the only school in the country that offers a four-year citrus degree. So if you're interested in horticulture, um, that's kind of one of our cool claims to fame that we have an orange grove on campus and there's a lot of really cool opportunities for biotechnology development there. Um, and then we see a lot of students get involved in things like environmental sciences, biotechnology, biochemistry that cross over really well with this field. Um, 
And then in terms of pre-vet, um, you can major in pretty much anything and still be a pre-vet option at Florida Southern. We do it as a pre-professional program, which means that you get a little bit of extra specialized guidance and support. There is a dedicated pre-vet advisor that you'll work with throughout your four years at Florida Southern. And we historically see a really good success rate with students getting into um, graduate school and vet school. So uh, like I think a lot of the schools here, we focus a lot on your opportunities to get involved in high impact experiences, research, presentations, and having a small class size. We are a very hands-on school and we want you to be able to take the opportunities that you've gotten and really run with those. Um, but I've talked a little bit about what Florida Southern is like in the classroom, but I think more than anything, we really conceptualize the Florida Southern education as being held up by kind of these three pillars of what we call the three guarantees, which is that you're guaranteed a chance to study abroad and that's actually baked into your tuition. So a lot of the trips are fully or partially covered by your tuition costs. They're not extra. Um, we guarantee internships for all of our students and we guarantee graduation in four years. And so you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this, everything from going to Bimini to work in shark nurseries, to go to Hawaii to do biochemistry research. Um, and we have our students intern everywhere from like the Animal Kingdom at Disney to the Tampa Aquarium. So we're super well located in a really large population center that has a lot of opportunities for kind of personal and professional development which means that we see a really solid kind of track record of success for our students pursuing either graduate school, about a third of our students will continue on to some form of graduate education or continuing on to be employed in the workforce in some way. So I'll touch a little bit on what life is like at Florida Southern. We are a residential campus. You can see down the bottom left there, we're a super beautiful place to live. We have been named the most beautiful campus in the state. We're a National Historic Landmark as well, which is kind of a cool side benefit if you're interested in Frank Lloyd Wright architecture for the largest collection of his architecture in the world. We are a Division II school, so if you're an athlete or interested in intramural or club sports, feel free to send me a message and I'd be happy to connect you with those opportunities as well. Um, and we're a really involved campus overall, so we see our students get really heavily involved in clubs, organizations, community service, Greek life, all of that good stuff. Um, we're a test optional school. There is no application fee. So if you have questions about the application process, you're more than welcome to get a hold of me. Um, and you're automatically evaluated for merit scholarships when you apply to Florida Southern. Um, so if you have questions about anything, I am really the person that you'll be with from now until you set foot on FSC's campus for orientation. So all of my contact information is there. And if you need anything, whether that's questions about like the financial aid process, if you want me to connect you to a counselor um, or a academic advisor or a career counselor or a faculty member, that's what I'm here for. So I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, and I will look forward to answering your questions in the chat. All right, I am up next. Let me get my screen up here. Alrighty. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Reynolds. Uh, I am the senior admissions counselor, one of the senior admissions counselors here in the Office of Admissions at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Um, so I am uh, not only uh, the specialty counselor for the College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences, but I'm also an alum of CFANS, as we call it on campus uh, myself. Um, so I get to wear both hats, which is really super fun for me. Um, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities uh, is the flagship university for the state of Minnesota. So we offer a, a huge array of majors and minors across our eight colleges. Um, and something that we're not only committed to um, in the academic rigor side of things, um, but we're also committed to tailoring academic advisors um, to students majors to help them stay on a path for four-year graduation. So currently we sit in the top three of the Big Ten for four-year graduation rates. Um, our campus is, um, is located in uh, the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota, um, which is really one of the major metro regions for the Midwest. Um, and something that we um, offer is kind of this combination of a kind of insulated and close-knit campus while still being very much steps away from the career benefits of the Minneapolis metro area. So you can kind of see where we are in relation to downtown Minneapolis. 
Um, the Minneapolis St. Paul light rail system runs directly through campus. It can take you across the city, but it can also take you um, to the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport um, directly, which can either offer you direct flights home to California or um, across the globe for one of our many, many study abroad programs. Um, CFAN students typically are studying abroad, oftentimes in Belize. We have a couple uh, there. We have some in Thailand. We have a couple in the, in the UK and, and Europe. And so there's a lot of really great uh, programs that you can access um, through CFANS directly. Um, with our larger size, one of the things that we do is um, directly admit students right away into one of our eight freshman admitting colleges. So these colleges kind of house different groupings of our majors based around one central theme. So on top of having food, agricultural, and natural resource sciences in one college, we also have design, liberal arts, business, things like that. Um, and it is definitely possible to move around if you change your mind. Um, I'm a really good representation of that. Um, and um, we know a lot of students might uh, change their major within the first couple of semesters of college. Um, but I want to dive more into CFANS and talk about what we do as a college. One of the things that really makes us stand out on campus is, is our size. We have about 2,000 undergraduate students uh, in total. Um, and with our faculty members, that's about 11 students to one faculty in our college. So most CFAN students that I work with say that their experience really feels like attending kind of like a private college in size, but with all of those resources of a land grant, Big Ten University kind of at their disposal. Um, CFANS also has its own section of campus that houses our academic buildings within blocks of barns, greenhouses, veterinary clinics, agricultural test fields, um, because um, we really want those to be used regularly by our classes and our student groups. And we really pride ourselves in being the college that houses life science degrees that are really truly de dedicated to that hands-on work. Um, we have 14 individual majors um, within our college. Um, and I just kind of want to highlight a couple of things about them, but uh, they have a lot of sub areas or sub tracks within them. So if you're looking for something, um, I really encourage going digging around our website because you find some really cool stuff um, for sure. Um, we have an animal science program, which is our um, most popular major. It has a really spectacular pre-vet emphasis um, within it and also has a fast track pre-vet program for students interested in being um, uh, vets for large livestock animals. Um, we do have one of the veterinary schools um, here in, in the United States. Um, so we have a lot of students who will go on to our veterinary program, but um, certainly many students who go elsewhere across the country. Um, we also have, um, of course, all those livestock areas on campus and the animal hospital. Um, but many students in animal science also focus on um, agricultural production or industry and business as well. And we have several other majors that um, really emphasize agricultural business, communications, education. Um, and we have some agronomy folks and horticulture folks in our plant science major as well. Um, over kind of on the natural resource side of things, if you're interested in working with wildlife or aquatic species, the fisheries, wildlife and conservation biology major offers a really great program for students with that. Um, our campus is actually located right on the Mississippi River, so we have a lot of really awesome programs that help our students kind of get hands-on experience in that. Um, and we also have, of course, our more general environmental science policy and management major, things of that sort. Um, so a lot of really great um, emphasis areas and some really cool minors, too, um, to add. The only thing that I also kind of wanted to cover with um, CFANS is kind of going back to that location emphasis in the context of CFANS, because one of the things that the Twin Cities really offers is this really great career advantage for our students. 95% of our students have been reporting to us that six, by six months out, out from graduation, they're employed within a related field to their major. Um, so the Twin Cities actually houses five of the world's 30 largest food companies, um, a huge array of outdoor spaces for both recreation and employment. Um, and it is, uh, St. Paul is our state capital, which supports, of course, a wide number of nonprofits, state and federal agencies, uh, and things of that nature. So just a really great place to be, um, both as a student, um, even if you love agriculture and the outdoors, being in a city is still um, something that a lot of our students really enjoy and really find to be beneficial to their education. Um, and then if you are interested in applying, um, we also um, are not requiring test scores uh, this year because of COVID. Um, so uh, that is not a barrier for students to apply. Um, we have a pretty easy application. We don't require um, application 
um, we don't require uh, letters of recommendation or kind of long form essays for our application. Um, and we have three different deadlines that are listed up there. Um, none of them are binding. They're just um, kind of a, a, a sequence for you to kind of figure out when you would hear back from us on a decision. Um, if you have any questions about any of our programs, um, I am specifically the contact for the College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences. Um, I also work with two other counselors who are based in California, so they also are happy to answer your questions if you have any, but would love to chat more if you have questions and I look forward to answering some of them today. Awesome, thanks Abby. My name is Mackenzie Rash and I'm with Oklahoma State University, so I am gonna start sharing my screen and we will get on the road here. Okay, so I am the admissions counselor for the state of California and um, I am um, regional in Dallas, Texas. So I am not in California. I was making trips out there to see you guys, um, but currently I'm not right now. Um, but if you have any questions, I will be your main form of contact. So Oklahoma State is located, we are in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We are one hour from Oklahoma City and one hour from Tulsa. So Stillwater is that tried and true traditional college town. Um, we are uh, in a rural part of Oklahoma. We uh, have 26,000, um, 22,000 students in our, uh, that are undergraduate students, but we have 50,000 students in the town of Stillwater. So very traditional college town. Everyone lives, breathes, eats the Cowboys. They um, love Oklahoma State, and it's just a really fun traditional college town to be in. 26% of our students are out of state, and we are a land grant and tier one research institution. So the Ferguson College of Agriculture is our college of ag at Oklahoma State. Uh, we pride ourselves on being that land grant tier one research institution, and we are one of the few universities that has all of our live animal, bar animal barns left on campus um, well located a little bit further away from campus um, but just for that hands-on learning experience and for students to get to that are just wanting to work outside of the classroom we um, have a lot of different uh, things to offer with our Ferguson College of Agriculture. We have one-on-one -on -one academic advising, so you will have an advisor throughout all your four years at OSU, and usually it's a lot of our professors, a lot of our um, just main, um, main professors at, in our Ferguson College of Ag, they're here to help guide you through this process. Um, so that's um, one thing that we really love to boast about is just that academic advisor that's gonna be with you all four years to help um, just be that mentor for you and just um, point you in the direction that you're wanting to go with your career. We have $1.8 million per year in scholarships for our Ferguson College of Agriculture alone. So a lot of undergraduate scholarships that are going not only to our freshmen, but also sophomores through seniors and um, a lot of scholarship opportunities uh, in that college. We have a vet med early admission program, which means that as a freshman, um, you coming in, uh, you are able to apply for this early admission program to our vet med school, and you will find out your freshman year if you are accepted into that. So that's something um, different and interesting that Oklahoma State has. Uh, just also having um, a vet med school allows us to do that as well. We have 16 majors and over 50 different options that you can choose with those majors and five different pre-vet major options. So it's just all depending on what type of animal you're wanting to work with. Um, three different majors that are a pre-med option and one major with a pre-law option. And so here's some of our facilities on campus. So picture on the left, the CGI picture, is our Ferguson College of Ag that is opening fall 2023. And um, so that is a big project that's underway right now. We're really excited about that. Um, the Ferguson family um, has come in and is building that. And so that will be done hopefully by the time um, you guys are, you know, sophomores or juniors. Um, the Greenhouse Learning Center opened this past year. That is the top right picture there. Um, and our, our horticulture and landscape architecture learning labs in that bottom right opened this past year as well. So um, just really 
uh, as you can see, we prior prioritize that hands-on learning experience and just getting to work in different labs. Um, and we are just having continued investment in our facilities as well and investing in our students. So for an application with us, we are not on the Common App, but your application can double as your scholarship application. So a completed application for us is our application on our website in your high school transcript. We are test optional. So if you haven't been able to test because of COVID, then you can send us um, uh, your high school transcript and then complete two essays and be admissible that way. And what makes your application your scholarship application is your essays as well as that leadership and involvement resume on your OSU application portal. So if you're a senior this year, your application is open now and you can apply right now. And if you guys have any other questions, I am your admissions counselor. Uh, there is my contact information and I am just here to help you in any way. Uh, and as always, go Pokes. I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah now. Awesome, thanks everyone. And thank you, Mackenzie. My name is Sarah Buswell. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Washington State University. WSU is Washington's land grant institute. Nice that we can kind of end in your backyard during this presentation today. Um, this photo, one of my favorite to start with just because it showcases both campus life and what it looks like to be a student on campus, as well as the surrounding area. We are in a very rural location where you can think about agriculture and animal sciences in your backyard. Uh, the back here, when you're looking at the edge of campus, that's just a continuation of our research laboratories. Uh, all of this, for the most part, is part of our egg science research facilities. A lot of it is wheat. Uh, we are a research capital for wheat strains. Um, it takes about 15 minutes to go from one side of campus to the other. We are fairly large in terms of student population, but the town size itself is quite small. It is a rural college town when you are a student at Washington State University. We are on the eastern side of the state, so folks from out of state are typically thinking Seattle, Olympia, maybe you've heard of Spokane, but we are way over here. Way over here. It takes about four and a half hours to get from Seattle to Pullman, Washington, where WSU's campus is located. Spokane Spokane is the, the second largest city in the state. It takes about an hour and a half to, to travel from Spokane to Pullman, Washington. The nice thing about being a land grant institute is that we have extensions in every county across the state. So yes, our campus is here physically in Pullman, Washington, but you might be drawn all over, um, not just in Eastern Washington, but Western Washington with your research and your academics. We are a college town, 35,000 people live in Pullman, Washington, and just over 20,000 of them are college students. The average age of a Pullman resident is 22 years old. Uh, it's, it's certainly a unique experience to look around and, and at the, the stoplight at the road next to you or grocery shopping or bowling, it's always college students. And if there's someone older than you, it's likely someone who's teaching your classes or runs a small business. The, the main streets of Pullman, even in the intersections, you'll find WSU logos painted into the middle of them. The small businesses have WSU flags flying from their, their establishment from the telephone poles. It is this community that's totally engaged and supportive of the, the student population of the university itself. Connors, which stands for College of Agriculture, Human and Natural Resource Sciences, I'm fairly certain it's the longest acronym on our campus, is where most of our agricultural sciences and animal science students will find themselves. You are absolutely encouraged to double major if you'd like. A number of our majors are also certificate based, so I like to use the option organic and sustainable agriculture. If you wanted to use that as your base major, go for it, but that's also a program that you can add it as a certificate certificate to something like greenhouse production or plant and soil sciences management. Lots to choose from. We do have a vet school on our program along with a various number of masters and PhD programs within Connors. Uh, for students that are looking to go right into vet school, they'll have to apply to our honors college. I'll talk about in just a little bit. But one thing I really like to harp on is the access to research. Because we are very undergraduate heavy, most of our undergraduate students are picking up those research opportunities. They're able to research as early as their first year. 
the Office of Undergraduate Research, as well as Connors, offers specific grants to students within agriculture and animal sciences to work on their own in their research. But more often than not, if you're not quite sure where to start, there are always professors or faculty members that are looking for students to engage with them and to work with them in their fields. Some of our, our more exciting research opportunities include things such as the, um, the grizzly bear research facility. I have a handful of students that they actually took vitals on grizzly bears before they ever worked with cats and dogs within the vet school. But that's an option that undergraduate students can work with grizzly bears on campus. Of course, they are within facilities. They're not wild grizzly bears. But some of the, the research that's going on right now is trying to determine if heart disease can be cured in humans by learning some from some of the sequences on the, the grizzly bear genome, which are healthy as can be. They can eat as much as they want, sleep for months at a time, and wake up happy and healthy. So why can't humans is the big question. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we have extensions on all of our, or on, in all of our counties across the state. Some of you may have heard of those, those killer bees that were making national media. You had a number of WSU professors and students working to pinpoint how they are coming into the US. Northwest Washington was a hot spot for a little while and they're actually working on a heat map and a tracking map to see where the bees will go next. But just kind of an example of something that's not on campus, but has a lot of active research and students engaging with their field and in the field. Um, and what else can I tell you? Of course, the Honors College. The, the Connors as a whole is already quite small. You'll find that most of your classes have fewer than 25 students in them naturally, but any of those off major courses, those general education requirements, those what we call U core classes, where you might have more than 50 or even close to, to 150 students in them, the Honors College might be a good fit for you. It caps all of your classes at 25 students and it does offer that DVM partnership program that I mentioned. It's actually the, the least competitive route to get into one of our most competitive doctoral programs on campus. It also shaves a year off of that DVM or that Doctorate of Veterinary Medicine. Students who apply to the Honors College interview for the DVM their first year, uh, they go from eight years in school down to seven years in school. A little exciting. I, I list the middle 50% GPA here just to give you a snapshot, but please don't feel as though you are barred from entering the Honors College if your GPA is slightly lower than that. Really, there is a, there's a, two essays that are required to be admitted to the Honors College, and those essays are a bulk of the decision in many, many cases for those reading committees. So if you're at a 3.5, 3.4, you're probably still a strong and competitive applicant, but be sure to spend a lot of time on that essay. Student life, I would be remiss if I didn't quickly mention at least student life and what students are doing outside of their academics. We are a part of PAC 12 Division I athletics with more than 400 different student clubs and student involvement. In your free time, it's more than likely that you're attending guest lecturers, you're, you're doing things outdoors where it's taking advantage of our four seasons weather in our rural location, but student life is hallmark at WSU. Real quickly, I'm sure many of you are familiar with what's called WUI or Western Undergraduate Exchange. That's our automatic tuition reduction program for California residents that have a 3.6 GPA or higher. Uh, if you're not quite WUI eligible, you may be Cougar Award eligible. That's automatically awarded to students with a 3.2 to a 3.59. And both of these, again, are on the unweighted scale. With that, for you seniors that are ready to apply, our application is on our website. We admit on a rolling admission basis, and we are test blind this year. So please do not send your SAT, do not send your ACT, even if you have them. It's a $70 application fee that can be waived. Uh, there's a fee waiver built into the application. If you have any questions or if you need more information, please feel free to reach out to me. There's my contact information. But I think we're ready to turn it over to some questions now. Let's see, and one that I saw, and it looks like it was likely answered, but I'm guessing all of us could elaborate a little bit more on it. 
um, so that all can hear it in the recording here. But uh, anything to add as far as major in entomology? And I can I can get us started, and then maybe we can go in reverse presentation order. So Mackenzie, you can take it after me. But entomology at WSU absolutely a program area for students to study. It's a little bit more of a, a foundational program. I think the masters and the PhD programs within entomology are certainly more robust on our campus, where students are usually going to major in entomology but not have a specific um, insect or animal that they're that they're focusing on. A lot of their research is going to be entry level research at that, that stage too. But yes, it is an option. Yeah, for Oklahoma State, entomology is a major option. Um, our major is entomology and pathology. Um, there is also a, a pre-vet major within our entomology if you're interested in going to vet school and a pre-med major if you're interested in going on and um, doing something uh, doct doctoral wise. So um, yes, it kind of to echo what Sarah says, it is, a, it is a major with Oklahoma State, but it is kind of that first step into maybe uh, going on and getting a master's or doctorate in something. Yeah, not to not to echo everything that's been said, but um, we have a we have an undergraduate minor in entomology that usually gets paired with one of our maybe natural resource or plant science majors, depending on what the student wants to do in entomology. In, eventually, um, we do have those masters and PhD programs. Um, we're really big on bee research um, at the University of Minnesota. So we have our, our bee center um, that was recently completed over the last couple of years. So there's a specific research center on the St. Paul campus next to our greenhouses that you can utilize as an undergraduate, undergraduate student. So um, definitely if you're looking for kind of that first stepping stone toward that, that master's or PhD, that's a, it's a good program to check out. Um, for us, since we're a really small school, we don't support like a full major or a minor in entomology, but instead what we'll see students do is pursue those kinds of interests at like a research or independent study level. Um, Florida is a super cool place for anything involving insects because of biodiversity, so I know we've had students in the honors program do entomology oriented personal research. It's just that your degree is going to say something like marine biology if you're interested in water insects or biochemistry and molecular biology if you're interested in, I don't know, um, insect shell formation. So you would do that as something that would be self-directed within your major. Um, similar to Florida Southern, we are a small school um, and ours is very much related to more the marine life. So occasionally we will have a visiting professor who studies something more towards the marine entomology um, side of things. And again, you can do things in your um, your independent study or research um, program, but usually that's not the direction our students want to go. So they will definitely help facilitate it as something new and unique, um, but not usually what our students are looking for. And students, if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop, drop them in the chat have a, a unique opportunity to pretty much pick the brains of, of some professionals that you get some one-on-one -on -one time with right now. In the meantime, um, maybe a good question to ask that I've had a, a couple of times over the last few days with panels coming up is about retention rates. And of our students, who's returning? Who's coming back because they're excited about their education? Um, I, I can start and go reverse order again if we want to, but at Washington State University, almost 83% of our students will return to that, that sophomore year from first to sophomore year, that is. Yes, same with Oklahoma State. It's around 84% are coming back to school and um, coming back sophomore from freshman to sophomore year. Um, currently across the entire University of Minnesota, we have a 93% so, uh, freshman to sophomore year retention rate. Ours is in the 80s. I would have to get the exact number for this year because I haven't seen our updated figures um, with the COVID situation. Things have been a little bit different because we are partially um, bringing back students remotely versus in person. So I know that all of us have probably seen some weird impacts from the pandemic. Um, but that's awesome. 
Um, and across all of our programs, we're at a, an 87% retention um, from freshman to sophomore year um, at Maine Maritime. And for you students, the retention can be a, a nice number. It shouldn't be maybe your number one indicator of how you're picking a university, but it's a good indicator uh, to learn what students are, are gaining as far as experience and education and their time on a campus. Uh, likely if you enjoy your time, you're returning to that campus. If you're less thrilled with the support, with your academics, with the experience, you're probably transferring to another university. So you, you want to, it would be nice to see the university you're attending have a, a higher than average retention number. Do you want to talk about any visit or opportunities? Um, Sarah, do you want to start and go around too um, with COVID and how that's affected? Sure, yes. So WSU, we are closed to visitors. Those self-guided tours, uh, students are more than welcome to be on campus, but our welcome center is closed to group visits or, or even just group tours. Um, we have a great little map that folks can print out and follow along when they're on campus. If you're not in the area or if you can't get to campus, we do have virtual visits, virtual tours for students to sign up for. If that sounds interesting to you, please feel free to reach out and I can connect you. Yeah, for Oklahoma State, we are doing a daily campus tour and all of that, it's on our website, okstate.edu. Um, so if you are wanting to travel halfway across the country, take a little break out of California, we are open and um, taking tours, at CDC guidelines in place, of course. Um, but if I always joke, if you're not wanting to travel halfway across the country during a pandemic, I don't blame you. We also have virtual tours online as well of all of our different facilities for you to be able to check out and see, as well as a virtual presentation put on by one of our admissions counselors. Yeah, so we currently don't have any in-person tours. Um, like Sarah, we do have a self-guided tour option. So if you wanna come and fly to Minnesota and walk around campus, certainly feel free. Um, our campus is open to the public. We do have most of our buildings, however, our key card access. So you'll mostly be in the outdoor spaces. Um, the other things that we're doing, of course, we're doing virtual visits. So I host a CFAN specific visit every single week. So if you want to log on and learn more about the college, I usually have two or three current students with me who kind of do a little miniature panel. Um, and then we're going to be doing some kind of more specific one off events throughout um, the fall. So we'll probably do a pre vet and vet school kind of merger event. Um, and then I'm also going to be um, doing some stuff at the National FFA convention if anybody is involved with that. Um, so that'll be pretty fun. Um, otherwise, I'm also just happy to, you know, set up a Zoom call or um, many of our students also do that as well. So happy to always kind of set those types of things up too. Um, I've got links, if I can point to the right section, if you want to scan those, but you can also text me if you need me to text you the links. Um, we're open for socially distanced limited hours. So if you select a time on the website and it's closed, that means it's filled for the day. Um, so try another day or send me a message. But otherwise, I think there's a lot of good virtual opportunities. I'll also throw in a plug for what we're calling our mock meetings, which are the webinars that we're running. Um, so we'll have people from different majors and like current students and faculty, and a lot of them coming up in October are going to be focused on specific majors. So if you want more information about a particular department, that's a really good way to learn more. So we are also open for on-campus tours. All of our buildings are closed, um, but we are finding we're doing small um, tours on campus with students. Um, so you can, if you wanna fly all the way across country, um, you can come uh, for those. We do have um, virtual Tuesdays where our academic departments are doing Zoom, um, short Zoom presentations that you can learn more about, as well as student information um, sessions. So Sarah, I think there's two questions if you want to take it. I think we still have more time. Oh yeah, I think we can get these done really quickly in two minutes. Maybe we try to answer them at the same time. What is the minimum GPA needed to go to these universities? And I'm a junior in high school. Should I take the SAT or ACT? Um, at WSU, we don't have a minimum GPA that's required, though our average for fall 2020 was a 3.48 unweighted GPA. So that's kind of the number that you probably want to be shooting for. And as far as SAT or ACT for a junior at WSU, we wouldn't recommend it just because of the, the given circumstances and the state of coronavirus. Yeah, for Oklahoma State, uh, our average class is a 3.3 GPA, but um, 
like WSU, we are um, just, just all depends on your application. And yes, if you don't have access to a test, there are test optional ways to be admitted to Oklahoma State. So do not worry about taking a test. Yeah, so the University of Minnesota, um, at, for CFAN specifically, our incoming average middle 50% students typically on an unweighted scale are usually around a 3.6 to a 3.9, depending. Uh, but we do a holistic review, so we don't have a minimum or a cutoff. So, you know, it, I would say that, you know, as long as you're getting, you know, mostly A's and B's in your classes, I usually encourage students to uh, be applying for admission, uh, especially to CFANS. Um, for ACT, SAT, um, our institution has still not made a call yet on what we will be doing for the next uh, application cycle. Previously, we, we did require an ACT or SAT. This is our first semester of, um, of not requiring it. So it'll probably just depend upon um, student, students across the country, the ability to take those tests, because we realize that coming up into spring, which is when a lot of juniors typically take them, if it's going to be difficult to take the test, then we'll probably adapt accordingly. Yeah, like everyone else, I think the term minimum GPA is often a little bit misleading for how the application process works. Um, so you can have whatever GPA you want. For us, our average um, weighted GPA is about a 3.7. Um, and for test scores, I would not currently recommend trying to take it if you don't feel safe in doing so. Um, we're test, optionable, uh, test optional for the foreseeable future. All right, thank you so much panelists. Um, and thank you students as well. Thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link um, to a very quick four question survey. And then also don't forget to sign up for more sessions. Um, check out the schedule at the college to career fairs connect.org. And then this recording will be available in about a week or so um, online on the same website. Thank you. <laughs>